Einstein asked why the electron has the charge and mass it does. Why not its winning lottery number or some other lottery number that the rich people get exercise scratching the uh, scratching of the, the, the winning visa number? And so um, I had asked this question also, and uh, we asked, like, where do electrons come from? If all motion comes from other motion, this is not a question that answers, you know, the question of how did we get here? If it doesn't, it's not a scientific answer. It's like Aristotle's answer to, why does smoke rise? Because it's the most natural way for it to go. Well, the Pope has white smoke or black smoke for his uh, auto. He got another uh, van. He's been pulled over for not wearing a seatbelt, but he's... Uh, you know, he's, in, he's in the cloud if he's got the driver's side air cushions of the angels. On. <laughs> so um, I asked this question, you know, if electrons come from other electrons, and this gives us nothing, but if we say that there is a point where the electrons are created, electromagnetic fields are being created, like I said, the black hole, then we would say that um, that um, electron is no longer without explanation. We reduce the simplicity with certain added a, added a um, a higher up method of science instead of sidewise, which explains nothing and gets us nowhere because it's completely sidewise, horizontal. You know, all motion comes from other motion, but that motion comes from other motion, or nowhere else, right? But if we have a source like the black hole where the gravitational field implodes inward, and then beyond a certain density, it will get to where it would change its face so much that it uh, excludes the field lines, what I call field line removal, FLR. This is like the wheels within wheels. The gravity field has the largest wheel with some conservation laws. The electromagnetic field has those conservation laws plus more of its own, and the strong law, strong force has some conservation laws, all those conservation laws of electromagnetism and gravity plus more of its own, like wheels within wheels. So you can see that if the gravity implodes in the black hole at a certain point in the rear radiates, then we're going to have um, a sort of um, way that the electron doesn't know the gravity, and there's no gravity inside the electron, so that the electron has large mass by scattering experiments internally, and also the renormalization works so well which is the most well-proven idea in the history of science other than what's called general relativity. As I say elsewhere, I don't believe in strictly general relativity, but I believe in um, the, um, the, the value of what the predictions of special relativity are. Not the theory, I think it's not, it's, what the, it doesn't predict the, it's, it's the opposite of what the theory predicts of general relativity. So if you have your um, electron and it floats to this point and radiates back out, then there's no gravity inside. But the gravity flows in the spaces between the quanta, because it's being removed from the field lines, and it just like simply wraps around with some acceleration of the spin of the particle, it's all the sources of quanta are the sources of gravity, and then it unifies on the other side with a net acceleration, a change of the wavelength by comparing the two sides of the spin of your electric charges. You may say, well, electric charges, they are actually, you know, um, they're, gravity's not electromagnetic. Einstein believed in electrogravity for a while, and, uh, he asserted that gravity, that you know, uh, mass is not electromagnetic, and there's a simple reason to believe this when you look at it superficially, and that is that you take electric charges and they're not unified, you bring them together like the Earth, all large masses in the cosmos mostly, or well, where else, are, um, they um, have zero electric charge like atoms because they combine together, and so you have zero electric charge. If, if electric charge is electromagnetic, then we would have zero gravity if the gravity is a little changed. So I solved this problem by saying that the gravity may be much faster and wrap around those electric charges, even inside like a neutron, which has zero charge, because it's got uh, the faster uh, wrapping around those, those, those uh, magnetic, those electric charges inside the neutron. It has a small magnetic moment, the neutron, so that it's got uh, a certain amount of um, leftover, or even like lack of the equivalence of mass and energy, which relativity tells us is true, because the electric charges aren't equivalent. The, the positive charge has mass but some energy, and the negative charge has energy with some mass. The relativity will tell us that they're completely equivalent because it doesn't matter which is, which is, you know, one is equal to the other. If you move backwards through space, and space and time unified, you would move backwards through time, so the particle would spin reverse, and matter and energy matter would be completely equivalent as Dirac failed in trying to prove with um, his ideas about combining special relativity with um, quantum mechanics. So, um, the, you know, the neutron has a slight leftover magnetic moment because the mass and energy are not quite equivalent, and so you're going to have, uh, at least numerically they are, but not in the logic, more general sense, you know. Even a slight distinction between them would be, you know, just I think, of relativity, of the complete uh, absoluteness of relativity. So, um, you know, the paradox has been, you know, asked, you know, if you have the, um, the, the, the field of the, of the black hole, it's supposedly completely smooth by relativity. This is what Einstein believed in. He believed in complete continuity of space and time. 
He said, all his castles in the air, including mass and motion, completely fail if there's not complete continuity of the field. And yet others have said, well, you know, going to falling to the black hole, the particles will change their frequency and speed so much they'll have lots of radiation, there'll be a firewall. It'll be discontinuous. So ultimately the solution to this problem of where, um, you know, uh, why it is that um, you're going to have uh, the equivalence of um, both the quanta and the smoothness of the field, it's a paradox, right? It's a paradox. And um, so um, I think this is because to avoid catastrophe <laughs> or sabotage, I think that actually um, the, um, the paradox is that the field removes its own lines from itself and so that um, you get, you know, you have the, um, on the outside between the particles of the field is smooth, but on the inside it's the quanta. But ultimately, we have to have a solution. So I think that inside the black hole, the quanta are fizzled into, as they fall in, they're, they're shredded, but into pure gravity waves, basically, by falling faster than light. Because, you know, gravity is lighter than light, so move faster than light by generalization of Maxwell's method used to predict the speed of light exactly based on the force of electric charges. The charges are constant, the resilience of the medium between them is constant, the light, so the light has constant speed. This was a triumph of Maxwell's idea, and Einstein admired Maxwell the most. I don't think the wave uh, method of light is gone. I think it's just sort of changed another form of this, this idea of my called general wave dynamics. So gravity being much lighter than light, you know, you light up to travel faster, it would be much faster than light. And so um, inside the black hole, the acceleration is greater than the speed of light because you have different sizes of black holes. If they're all with the speed of light only as the acceleration, they'd all have the same size. So when it accelerates faster than light, it goes inward and it's, that shreds those particles. Like Einstein was asking, why does the electron have the charge and mass it does? Well, it's made out, ultimately made out of gravity waves, so you can shred it, and uh, I think perhaps in the future, one day distantly, or distant or more, we might be able to uh, find how to uh, use um, high-speed machines. The quanta themselves don't move faster than light, but for short distances, they might oscillate at faster than light. So we have them oscillating, and we can control the, how much the waves are there faster than light. It's sort of like the, the movie Light Show, where the lights moving, they're all at rest, like parallel processing. But the, the signal between them is essentially faster than light in terms of its information. So we shake these slow quanta, which are limited by the speed of light, but the friction of the field, which is all the raw physical effects except for gravity or other, like the strong force perhaps, as I say elsewhere. And so as you're um, shaking that field, you're going to generate uh, you know, those waves. You can have faster than light waves if you shake them a shorter distance with enough, with enough force, I think, like the movie Light Sign. And so by this we might be able to make these waves that will cancel the phase of those waves of the electron and basically fizzle out the electron. So inside the black hole I think we might be able to, it stretches it out and fizzle it into pure gravity wave. They say so often in relativity that as you're approaching the speed of light, you're actually wringing out all the energy of that light by um, stretching it out, you know, you're stretching out the world lines. It's like the spin of the quanta. I think that inside the relativistic wind tunnel, which is an idea I proposed, because we would move the field past the small simulation starship to see if we could move at the speed of light or faster. And by doing this, we would actually have relative motion. Einstein said it didn't matter whether the electric wire or the magnet was moving. The current in the wire is generated either way. It's, it doesn't matter which is at rest, so we have this relativistic wind tunnel. And I think we could use it to find um, stuff like the Fitzgerald contraction, which has never been observed. It's assumed to exist because the slowing of time exactly fits with the Fitzgerald contraction. The space and time are unified by Einstein's ideas. And so um, I think that we could actually then, um, you know, uh, build the t this relative wind tunnel to simulate, um, you know, gravity and simulate these, these, these changes. And at high speed, you know, you're not even going to have any kind of observer because it's going to be so polarized and you're going to have the, 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 the angle of your polarization. This is why electrons line up when you're in a strong field because it's, um, you know, you're, it moves forward with the, you know, your thumb is moving in the direction of your motion, so it curls around at the, at the right speed, so that you have the minimum force acting on the electron, because if it were spinning transversely, you know, with the motion of the, the um, electron, you're going to have it moving faster light on one side of the particle, so it minimizes that force. This is why all the particles would line up, so I think Einstein was wrong when he said that near the speed of light, you're going to have a, uh, the observer would notice nothing unusual around the experiments. The observer couldn't even exist there. It's going to be too much ionization and polarization. So, um, you know, inside the black hole, you're going to have your, um, your gravity unifying with your electromagnetism, and it would shred out your electrons, and that would make it so that the, the gravity moves much smoother and faster because it's going to have um, the, um, the field is going to 
be not a quantum. Gravity is not a quantum because we would have found quantum gravity. It stays at low energy in the, the spaces between the particles so that it never um, actually has shielding or quantum numbers. You'd have all this for gravity you wouldn't have usually. So since it's like a low energy well, the low energy saucer instead of a well, the, the waves flow in and out really fast and it doesn't have quanta. And it's the unifying wave because waves would unify because they're, they're more at one than, than particles which would radiate it out and we'd have, we couldn't even be here if the, the field wasn't unifying. So I think that, um, you know, if you have the gravity waves and they're shredded like this, the, the, the electron is shredded and Einstein's question is answered, even though you're violating electric charge and lepton number, it's only a question of continuity. You're only violating the quanta, you're only shredding them. And quanta seem to be, you know, you can shred a well, you can make it into a flatter realm, so I think it's not impossible to do this eventually. So the day that we shred the electron would be the way that day that we prove why we answer Einstein's question. But also, you know, the question is why do the black holes spin and not rip the galaxies apart? The answer would be because of the shredding, it shreds them up, the electrons and other quanta, and so they smoke, they flow much smoother and faster, and so there's not nearly as much friction. And um, another question is, you know, if the pulsar speeds up and it's following energy conservation because gravity is winding up the cosmos so it doesn't wind down over infinite time by thermodynamic entropy, then we're going to have the pulsar that's going to uh, speed up. You're actually adding quanta. You're adding some quanta to the pulsar, and it's following energy conservation. The problem is the black hole has more speed yet. Why doesn't it speed up so much that it, um, the, the mass is increasing, increasing, getting more and more quanta created inside the black hole out of the gravitational field? Then what's to keep it from over infinite time of um, you know most energy you know quanta around is getting more and more quanta with time because they're spewing out of the jets of the black hole or the large mass because that will be faster than light also in order to escape the gravitational field which is already accelerating the speed of light or faster and I think this is because by field line removal you bunch your uh, particles together inside the singularity there's a fifth and sixth force which is spinning faster than light because it's stronger than than the fusion to explain the the source of the jets you need a much powerful more source than fusion. And so they're spinning around to resist that implosion at spinning faster than light also to resist the gravity which otherwise is, they would implode to a singularity which Einstein was so spooked about. So if it's spinning faster than light, these heavy particles are called superfusion, the fifth and sixth force, they spin around and they, rate, they unify. They unify so that they're reduce, removing more and more of the field lines of the gravity. So that would explain the mechanism with the jets operate. They're then resisting that gravity. There's not much gravity even inside of your jets as they move out even though it's faster than light. And the spectra of the jets seem to be quite anomalous compared to the standard model. They don't fit the idea of the standard model. It's still there's something fundamentally new about the physics of the jets. So if you have your jets radiating outward and they're moving out at faster speed light, then they escape the black hole. But they also fizzle out. They're not stable because, you know, Einstein tells us that mass and energy equivalent, so the heavier particles are going to decay slower because, you know, time slows with mass. And yet the heavy particles, the heavier the particle is on the average, the slower it's... Uh, the faster its lifetime, the sword is to hooked on um, insurance from um, cartoon uh, mascots. <laughs> so um, you know, if you have your um, your particles and they're you know they're made out of gravity, then you're going to have them fizzle out from the, the fifth and sixth force to the um, to the electromagnetic fields around us. This is the source of the electromagnetic fields. But the problem is, if the um, the pulsars are speeding up, then you're going to have um, the the uh, gravity is going to uh, speed them up. You're going to have more and more quantum. This will cause more, and more gravity. So I think the, the photons may radiate out from those jets, and they may radiate out so much that it reduces the quantum. But this won't solve it because those two have gravity, and the gravity being faster than light can outdistance them all the time. Just, they go out so far, and they've been back around, and you've closed the universe. But you've got more and more quantum, more and more gravity for some reason. Gravity is volume energy conservation by the pulsar. So I think that we need a way to shred black holes, and this may be because um, as they radiate out from the jet, the cosmic jet, which would be like the galaxies, this is my idea of cosmic jet vortex cosmology, which I have in my site, Encyclopedia Computoria, the predictions I make from this. If the jet radiates out, it's going to have like the expansion that's caused by magnetic fields, mostly, where we are, which solves Einstein's problem with the cosmological constant. There is no low energy repulsive gravity, because we would have found it long since. So if we have them, the jets going out towards the disk, we find the cosmic equator by the WMAP uh, images, then we're going to have this like cosmic um, zone where the jet's going to meet the equator, sort of bending over like a 45 degree angle. And there we will see it annihilating with other opposite charged galaxies, and they annihilate, and there would shred the black holes and also shred up the quantum, such a strong force. This would explain the huge horde of quasars at the edge of the, the disk we find. And so they're powered by this opposite of the 
charges, opposite charges, one jet and the other jet, they, they swoop around and deposit their matter on the disk. The disk then falls back in, and this repowers by gravity, the jet again spinning outward. In cosmic cycles that have no beginning or end, it's perpetual motion, as we expect with gravity, because it's winding up the cosmos indefinitely. And so then we would have, um, this is also by bioelectric energy conservation, you know, otherwise, you know, everything would be in motion. One reason I believe in faster than light or field line removal is because if you have a particle at the speed of light, and you have um, your magnetic field around, say, the north pole to the disk of the particle, you know, the equator, and it's spinning around, it's going to go in a loop. It'll go um, in at the uh, pole, for example, and, and around, back up around, out the disk, and then back up around, and then the pole again, it cycles. But the outside of it has to go faster than light, and opposite in the direction that's the, um, the particle. So this, this tells us that it can only go with the... Um, you know, only with the um, inside going against the flow, because it would have field line removal, so the external field couldn't contact, couldn't reach to cause it to have relativistic effects that are faster than light of that magnetic field. I believe that the magnetic field itself can't go faster than light also.